Hi everyone, in this video we will be taking a look at the new merger uh, and also talk about contributions and how you can contribute to this project. For the people that are new to this channel, what we're doing here is we're trying to uh, make a multi mutual upgrade that is compatible with any printer running Marlin, uh, which means basically 99% of all FDM printers. Um, and uh, also while remaining uh, within a relatively cheap price, uh, so I'm trying to limit things, uh, capping things at around 150 US dollars. Um, but basically from the prices we're seeing now in the price list uh, that we should have, uh, it should remain well below that. So let's roll the intro and get right into it. So first off, what does it look like? So what you have here is uh, the new merger which just finished printing. Uh, let me turn off the printer so that we don't have uh, that fine noise anymore. So uh, I'm going to remove it from the print bed. Uh, you're gonna have to clean out the supports if you chose to print uh, with support. Uh, basically what I recommend is only using uh, support touching build plate to have uh, some cleaner threads. Uh, and we will get right into how to assemble it. So the merger is made of out of multiple parts. So you first have, of course, the merger itself. Uh, you will also need a couple of uh, PTFE couplers. So these are PTE4 and 10, which means that they can uh, pass PTFE tubing through them and they will hold it in place. Um, so you will need a couple of them. So you'll need about five of them for the merger. Uh, so one for six of them, sorry, for the merger. So you will need uh, one for the output and five for the input. Uh, what you also need that you just saw uh, are some PTFE tubes uh, and uh, those are simply to link together uh, from your MMU2 to the merger and then from the merger to uh, the nozzle itself. Uh, but you will of course need something a bit longer than that, this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, but you will need whatever length you need to go from your MMU2 to all of those five inputs and one of the length from there to the nozzle uh, when it's the furthest away from the MME2 and the merger. So uh, I will clean that model up and uh, then we'll assemble it and uh, show you what it looks like uh, when it's uh, fully assembled. Okay, so now that you have uh, cleaned up the model and removed the supports, uh, you just need to assemble it. So take your PTFE couplers and screw them into the uh, merger. So I'll do the five input ones in the beginning and then we'll do the output one. Okay, so once you've fully uh, inserted all of the uh, couplers on the input side of things, uh, take your PTFE tubes and uh, slide them inside uh, the couplers and then push them until you hit the end. In my case, I just f***ed up because those are too short. I'm going to have to get some bigger ones. Let me get back to you f Okay, so now that I've gotten some new PTFE tubing, I'm going to do the demonstration. So you take uh, your PTFE tube that is coming out of the MMU2 and then you slide it until you hit the end. Hold on. This side is not straight, so I'm gonna fix it up. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, once you have your merger with all the uh, couplers uh, in place, you will take that PTFE tube coming out of the MME2. Uh, so you will have to cut it to the required length here. I'm using a really long one, but you can use basically the required length for your uh, needs. And then you will slide it inside the PTFE coupler and push it until you hit the, hit the end. And this means that uh, basically there's the PTFE tube running from here all the way to over here, but I'm going to show you uh, that more specifically uh, on the 3D design. Okay, so this is an example, but basically you would have uh, like five PTFE tube coming out of there. And uh, then you just need to screw in the top PTFE coupler. And um, as you can see, you just have to add the PTFE tube running from uh, your like uh, printer, printer nozzle to the output of the merger. 
you input it and you push it firmly um, because as I'm going to show you in a, in a sec, there's a small um, holder to keep the PTFE tube aligned with the output. And if you don't push it really well, it's not gonna go in there. Uh, so just make sure that it's uh, fully inserted before uh, you try to load any filament. Okay, so uh, now I will get some filament and I will show you how it works. Okay, so now you just need to get some filament, uh, whatever you prefer using. And uh, well, then you just need to insert it and test whether it's smooth or not. And basically here, as you can see, it's really, really smooth and it works very well. So you have the filament coming in and filament coming out and the transition is very smooth. Uh, one little thing that I would adjust if I had to reprint this uh, would be the clearances because now the uh, filament uh, tubing that is 3D printed is, I would say, slightly too tight and this means that there's a little bit of friction. But as you can see, the transition in the entire design is really, really smooth and it works overall way, way, way better than uh, the previous design. Okay, so before we dive into the uh, 3D model and basically how I made it, uh, I first want to thank, uh, thank Paul Lewis uh, for providing me with the base model that I worked off of. Uh, so this is the model that he provided me with. Um, and uh, it's a really, a really good design, but there were a few issues that we realized during testing. Uh, and I'm going to explain them briefly right now. So let's go in wireframe mode. Uh, so the first thing that was actually the, the deal breaker here, here uh, is that the um, the transition between vertical and the actual filament path is not done smoothly. So it's a really rough change. Uh, even if the, the change in angle is relatively small, it's about 15 degrees, uh, it's still uh, in a single point and uh, the filament just cannot bend that much. So it causes a lot of friction and it's, it's not really smooth in terms of uh, transition uh, in the merging process. Uh, the next thing that, well, I didn't really like, uh, but that was doing perfectly the job, uh, is the way that the uh, threads were done. Uh, they are actually aren't uh, completely made and there's cut in, in, uh, in the middle. And this means that part of your crappler was uh, stinging out. And um, this was so that you could print the thing very easily because if you have a large flat platform to print it off of. Uh, but I still didn't feel like this was the better, best approach. So I also changed it in my final, de final design. Uh, so once again, thanks a lot for contributing. Uh, and if you watching this video wants to contribute to this project, uh, well, make sure to click the link down in the description. I will have my uh, the Discord and the GitHub down below. Um, so if you want to help and contribute, make sure to go there and you can message me or message anyone on there uh, and try to help with uh, this project. Uh, also, by the way, if you're still watching this video and you're interested uh, in this uh, project, which is uh, a multi-material upgrade uh, for very cheap and on any printer, uh, then make sure to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with what we're doing and so that you're notified when we actually finish building this uh, so that you can build it for yourself. Um, so now let's look at the final design. So the first thing that is, um, well, let's say important to mention is that I use parameters. Uh, so this means that I can edit uh, multiple things on the fly. Uh, this is an example. Height is a good example of that. Um, and this means that I can quickly change my design uh, to make it work better or depending on the results I get. So uh, I can easily balance between the amount of filament that is used and um, the, the, the actual smoothness and effectiveness of the merger. So um, the, the, the one I printed and I showed you uh, a few, few minutes ago uh, was printed with those exact settings. Uh, and I may tweak them a little bit uh, before the, the final stages in order to get a, a perfect ratio, um, at least the most optimal ratio. Um, and I haven't done any testing yet, so 100 millimeters was only a value that I randomly chose and thought would work recently and actually does work very well. 
Um, now, what did I change from uh, Paul Lewis design? So first off, the most important thing, let's say, is that I used um, curved tubes and both for the PTFE tube uh, insert and um, for the plastic tube. Uh, now this means two things. So uh, first the transition will be wave mover. So as you can see, uh, basically this is, uh, th th there's, I, I forced a straight line at least for one centimeter on the inputs and the outputs. And other than that, it's a spline that is tangent to both the inputs and the outputs. So this means that it will have the, let's say best transition uh, possible within the parameters that I gave uh, in, in the, the settings. Um, and this is uh, this has a much better transition than the previous model we were working with. Uh, the only downside is that now the PCFE tube inserts cannot go as far into the design, uh, but this is not too much of a problem because if you have decent clearances, then that shouldn't cause too much friction. The other thing that has changed is uh, the input side, uh, which as you can see now is slightly through like two millimeters um, thicker. So let me go back in the normal view. So it's a uh, two, extruded two millimeters so that it can fit all the threadings completely. And this way uh, I feel like the result is a little bit cleaner and uh, you make full use of uh, the, the threads and the coupler. Uh, one last little thing that I added is this little thing right here, which I mentioned when I was doing the assembly. Actually, one of the problem with uh, the PTFE coupler, so the PC4M10 uh, couplers, um, is that they don't guide the PTFE tube straight uh, all the way. And uh, this means that in our case, if this little piece that you can see here wasn't there, what would happen is that the filament, the, the PTFE tube would either go there, go there, go there, and it would not most of the time not be aligned with the filament output and this would cause obviously some problems uh, that's why i created this little holder thing right here um and it's basically a press fit you press fit the pgfe tube here and it holds it holds it right on top of the filament output uh, which makes the transition wave mover and basically fix uh, that little problem so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you um well in editing uh what that pgfe couple it looks like and as you can see right now uh, the, the, the pitch field can move freely inside of there and it's not guiding it up to that point and that's why I made this little change okay so project update time so one thing that we changed is that we are no longer going to use the 11 meter meters uh, brass gears for the extruding process uh, that's because initially I had chosen to go with them because they are way cheaper and they were the actually only extruded gears that were available during the pandemic when I started uh, doing this project and now that they're becoming more and more available um, I feel like it's a good time to switch and uh, I'm able to get my hands on them so I can switch uh, and with that there's another change that is uh, has to go with it is also a, a main body change uh, because we have now smaller gears so I need to uh, tweak a bit those dimensions uh, and I will do that in the following uh, days um, now there is uh, another thing, at least uh, that I've encountered, is that my uh, actual rod that I was using uh, for the extruded gear uh, and the extruding part, and basically all the rods that I had ordered initially are slightly bent, and I didn't realize that. Uh, and that's also what I told you in the, the video where I showed the, the first successful filament switch. Uh, and I've received new rods that are now straight, so I will be able to uh, rebuild the MME2 uh, and have it function properly. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. We're really, really close to a functional prototype and I expect to be able to do the first test, uh, at least on a 3D printer uh, around Christmas uh, or a bit later, but we are getting close uh, to uh, having our first result. Okay, so now regarding uh, contributing and getting access to all the files, and also regarding staying up to date uh, with this project. Uh, there are two things that I did. So I created the GitHub and the Discord server. Uh, on GitHub, you will have all the files. I will upload them basically uh, as soon as I post a YouTube video about them. So if you're seeing a file or a program that I run, it's probably already on GitHub. Um, and uh, on the Discord server, I will, there I have a specific 
update text channel where I post frequent update and basically what I'm working on and uh, what changes have happened and basically what I'm doing uh, and also what the contributors are doing. Uh, and uh, what you can also do on Discord is contact me or use one of the dedicated text channel uh, to provide me with ideas, report bug and like physical issues that you're faced. This will become more relevant uh, once the, the uh, project is done and you can actually build it. Uh, but for now, it's just there. Um, and where you can also get in contact with me. And well, basically, this is a really good way to contribute. And uh, regarding that, I want to thank uh, the two people, at least up till now, uh, that helped with this project. So Paul Luis uh, for both providing new ideas um, and helping with the design of uh, some files. And uh, also uh, Red, which helped me set up uh, auto-conversion uh, with converting the SCAD files to SCL files uh, inside GitHub. Um, and yeah, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. Uh, and if you didn't, uh, well, leave a comment telling me why. Um, and I will see you guys next time.